The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Two years ago, there was a sports competition. This was a women's lacrosse team competition. And there was an Israeli team competing in this game, and it was taking place somewhere in Canada. And in their playoff game against Kenya's national team, Israel won handedly 13-4. to But instead of rejoicing in this victory, the Israeli players left the game quite upset. And they were very disturbed. Why? Because they realized that they had an unfair advantage. While the Israeli players wore these state-of-the-art sports shoes with cleats, the Kenyan opponents wore plain gym shoes. It didn't have any cleats. And because the field was muddy, the players kept on falling. And they felt it was unfair. After the game, some of these young Israeli players called their parents to express how badly they felt about this game. Didn't feel fair. They couldn't run. The floor, the ground was muddy. One of the players' father, a man named Michael Dodavini, said it's worse than that because if they keep playing that way and they don't have cleats, they're going to do damage to their feet. And so that night, Dodavini calls the team coaches, the committee members, and some of the other parents. And they organized a collection to buy new shoes for the Kenyan players. And they asked the Kenyan coach for a list of all of their players and shoe sizes, but to please keep it quiet. And they literally needed to do this. They needed to call shoe suppliers with cleats to open up in the middle of the night so that they can get this collection there to Canada. And the very next day, the Israeli team, each and every single member of that team was carrying a gift bag and presented each one to another player from the opposite Kenyan team with this gift, a gift of shoes, the same shoes, types of shoes that the Israeli players had. The Israeli team did not seek any publicity. They didn't want it publicized. But the Kenyan team wanted it to be known to the world, what their opponents of yesterday's game did for them. And they posted it on Twitter, and it went viral. Wearing their new cleats in their next game, Kenya went on to win beat Belgium 16-9. to And they tweeted, One game in cleats today equals one win. And they added this line, No one can help everyone, but everyone can help someone. The Israeli goalie, she wrote this. She said, 20 years from now, I won't remember that we won a game here. But for the rest of my life, I will remember the smile on the Kenyan players' faces when we gave them those gift bags. The great Hillel said, in a place where there is no leader, strive to be a leader. Each of us can make a difference wherever we are. Sometimes even in the smallest gesture, we can have such a huge impact on the lives of others in ways we could never imagine. That's our privilege. And we're proud of that privilege. We don't hide from that privilege. In the San Fernando Valley, there's a friend of mine. His name is Paul Cohn. Paul Cohn is a sports agent, and he represents many professional baseball players. And he's also an observant Jew. And he tells a story how a few years ago, one of his clients was a star pitcher by the name of Tim Hudson. Those of you who are baseball fans may remember his name. And Tim Hudson became a free agent. Now, you know, in free agency, that means that all teams start competing and start bidding and the agent is very busy getting all these bids in and picking the, the winning bid. He was a top-tier pitcher. He had more than 200 wins in his major league career, and he was in big demand. The signing date was approaching. Paul Cohn had 15 offers on the table. He narrowed it down to four. It's Friday afternoon. It's a late November, which means Friday is coming in early. Negotiations now between the four are coming down to the wire. Candle lighting time was about 4.30. While two of the general managers involved in the talks knew that Paul was an observant Jew, the other two, who were newer, never dealt with Paul. They didn't know. There's a 3.30 conference call with the four general managers. Paul Cohn says, folks, some of you know, some of you don't. I keep Shabbat. Candle lighting is 4.30. I need to still take a shower. I need to get ready for Shabbat. Four o'clock, this ends. The process ends based on what time candle lighting is. So make your best offers in the next 30 minutes. And by 4 o'clock, I'm going to pick the winning bid. Comes 3.58. Paul Cohn calls Bob Evans, GM, general manager of the San Francisco Giants. And he says, Bob, you got it. We're good to go. 
It's you. It's going to be the Giants. I'm going to let the other three teams know. And after Shabbat is over, we'll do the paperwork. But for now, it could be a verbal agreement between us. You got it. It's yours. Bob Evans is not familiar with this candle lighting time, Havdalah time. And he says, listen, you know, (laughs) I want to wrap it up, wrap it up. That usually means the signing of a contract. It'll take me just about an hour to, to, to get my lawyers here to write it up. And Paul says, no, candle lighting time. I don't do contracts then. You got my word. You can trust me. We'll take care of it Saturday night. He says, okay, so we won't do the phone thing, but I'll email it to you, and I'll take the email signature. You won't have to do anything. Just email it back. He says, no, you don't quite understand. Code of Jewish law doesn't allow for emails. Don't worry. We're good to go. Saturday night comes. Paul Cohn calls Bob Evans. They finalize the contract. Tim Hudson plays for the San Francisco Giants. Two years go by. Hudson is now retiring. His last game is in San Francisco against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Paul Cohn is invited by the team owner to sit in the owner's booth for Tim Hudson's last game. The owner of the Giants is a Jew by the name of Larry Bayer. Larry Bayer comes over to Paul Cohn. You have a minute for me, Paul? Sure. Can we talk? Sure. You remember two years ago, the Tim Hudson deal? Sure. Remember that candle lighting thing that was going on that Bob Evans was telling me about? Sure. So I want to tell you what happened. Bob Evans called me at 3.58 after he got the call from you. And he says, I don't know what this guy Paul's doing. He says he's got this candle lighting time. He can't work after candle lighting time. The contract, no email, no this, no that. And he said that we have his word. He said, I hung up from Bob Evans and I called my wife. And I told my wife, it has been years since we had a Friday night Shabbat dinner. If Paul Cohn won't do a free agent deal worth millions of dollars because candle lighting is coming, we're going to have Shabbat dinner tonight. Call the whole family. Tell them when they come, I want them to leave their cell phones in their cars. No cell phones at the Shabbat table. We're going to have a Shabbat dinner in a traditional way, thanks to the inspiration of Paul Cohn. It's been two years I have never gotten a chance to tell you, but you're here now in my booth. I want you to know, Paul, because of you, not only did we have a Shabbat dinner that week, but we continue this tradition of every once in a while getting the whole family together and having a beautiful Shabbat dinner. That's a beautiful thing. Sixth inning comes. Once again, owner of the Giants comes over to Paul Cohn. Paul, you have a minute for my wife, Pamela? She wants to say a word to you. Sure. Pamela comes over. Paul, you remember the Tim Hudson deal? <laughs> yeah, I heard about a Shabbat dinner. Says, well, it doesn't just end with the Shabbat dinner. You see, a few years before that, my father had passed away. No one ever said Kaddish for him. And in his yard site, no one ever lit a candle for him. But hearing about your exchange with Bob Evans, which led to the Friday night dinner in my house, I made a resolution that night that from that point forward, every single year on my father's yard site, I'm going to make sure it's honored, not just with the candle, that someone says Kaddish for him. I wanted you to know, Paul, it's because of your phone call to Bob Evans that my father's now remembered. So we just do what we're supposed to do. And the world sees, and the world recognizes, and the world learns, and the world is inspired. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.